Oh, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Walking Through the Scriptures with Joseph Bahoda. We're continuing our series on tithing, and I'm continuing my series of my book, Word of Faith Preachers, How Misinterpretation of Scripture Might Lead You Astray. Last week or this past weekend, I uploaded a video of chapters six and seven of my book talking about when the how do you know when the Old Testament stops and when the New Testament begins and how that affects tithing. Today, we're going to continue our continue another chapter in my book um, called chapter 8, Leviticus 25, A Year of Rest. Now, this is very important because remember what I've been saying all throughout this series, biblical tithing, tithing in the Bible was never money. Tithing in the Bible was food and livestock. I, it, was, it was the produce and it was the animals. It was a tenth. It was 10% of the harvest that you had coming in from the harvest. So therefore, if you didn't have a harvest, you didn't have nothing to tithe, okay? Now, that's very important. Again, remember what I said, if, if, if you had no harvest, you didn't have anything to tithe because nothing came in. Now, that's very, very important. So when we changed it from agricultural, from food and livestock to money, when you get a biblical understanding that the tithe was food and livestock, it changes everything. And one of the big differences is we're going to look at today is in Leviticus chapter 25. But before I get there, because I've been showing some of you all in my description, some of the books that I've gotten on this tithing topic, and I've been putting them in the description. Well, thankfully this weekend, I found them in my private study here, and I want to show them to you. The first one is, Should the Church Teach Tithing by Dr. Russell Kelly. This book is phenomenal. This is actually Dr. Kelly's PhD doctoral thesis, okay? Phenomenal, phenomenal book. If you really want to get a good comprehensive look at tithing, what it is and what it's not, I mean, this book here is phenomenal. Though, granted, I don't agree with everything Dr. Kelly says, but this book is amazing. This book is like, again, it's a doctoral thesis of tithing, and this is what he got his PhD in. So, Should the Church Teach Tithing by Dr. Kelly? Um, a, theolo a Theologian's Conclusions About a Taboo Doctrine. Phenomenal, phenomenal book. Another book, which is a great book, very much smaller read, that you can read this one probably in a day or so. And this is where I'm going to come out of today, by the way, when I talk about Leviticus 25. This is Tithing in the Age of Grace by Joel Parker. He's really going to get into Leviticus, Leviticus 25. And also, the other cool thing about I love about this book is he talks about there may be numerous tithes, plural, in the Bible. And that's true. And when I looked at a lot of the scholarship about tithing, some scholars say you might have had the, the, the Israelites had to give maybe 20%. I've heard other things say 23%. I've heard other people say maybe 30%. So in the Bible, there was actually tithes, plural. And Joel Parker in his book talks about the different types of tithes, the purpose for those tithes, and what they were used for, and how they bless people. Now, I'm going to get, now, I'm going to get into that in my book because I'm going to talk about how then the tithes were used to help the poor and less fortunate and stuff like that. They weren't used to be build these huge church empires and these huge mega million dollar buildings and edifices and all that. So Joel Parker gets into all that. And then the other book that I got is by Matthew Naramore. Again, very, very small book, so you can read this one in a day or two too. It's called Tithing, Low Realm, Obsolete, and Defunct. Again, by Matthew Laramore. Now, I've been talking about the arguments people make about you know, tithing and why you should still tithe. Well, his half of his book, I would say, deals with that. Such as, you know, um, the tithe is the Lord's. I'm like, yeah, that's true. But that was Matt Malachi. We're talking about food, not money. Um, if you don't tithe, you're a God robber. And again, that was true under Malachi 3, but Malachi 3 doesn't apply to us. Our curse will come upon you if you don't tithe. Uh, we are commanded to prove God with our tithe. Tithing rebukes the devour. Again, I've heard some people say that means, you know, tithing rebukes Satan and all that kind of stuff, or he rebukes the, the demons that are assigned to your finances. I've heard all that. Uh, the tithe is a connection to the covenant. You know, I even heard Creflo Dollar say that tithing is our covenant connector. No, in the New Testament, the blood of Jesus is our covenant connector. So again, this is all this, you know, arguments that people make, and, he, and Matthew Naramore exposes all that. Also, too, Jesus tithe. Jesus taught tithing, which I talked about last week. The tithe redeems the other 90%. That's not necessarily true. I've talked about that. 
Tithing qualifies you to receive more from God. I talked about not necessarily, because again, if we're still being bad stewards, you know, we're going to lose what we got. Also too, tithing began in the Garden of Eden. That's not true. Kenneth Copeland preaches that mess. Totally wrong. Uh, when Jesus died on the cross, God was paying his tithe. Now, personally, I've never heard that, but that's a really bad one. Um, if you don't tithe, God will take away the, that percent from you. If everyone tithe, churches would have plenty of money. Um, heaven will be shut up against you if you don't tithe. So all these type of things. Um, so Matthew Naramore, he really breaks a lot of those misinformation things down. So I highly recommend his book as well. So if you get these three books on tithing, should the church teach tithing, tithing in the age of grace, and tithing, low realm, obsolete, and defunct. If you get those three, you'll be very, very uh, well on your way to understanding tithing, biblical tithing. Now, what I did in my Word of Faith Preacher's book, I, I basically take those three books and I, I basically uh, concise it down. And my book is like 246 pages long, but the first 79 pages deal with tithing. Okay. And then the rest is also false teaching of the Word of Faith Preacher. So, that's kind of what I do. So the first like first third of it is dealing with tithing, and it's basically just a uh, conjunction of those three books. And then I start dealing with other word of faith heresies as I go on in my book. So today in my book, we're going to deal with chapter 8. So chapter 8, the Leviticus 25, a year of rest. So I'm going to go to it, and we're really going to see how tithing in the Bible being food and livestock, how this really comes into play. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and read Leviticus 25, and I'm going to do some commentary on it as we go along. So Leviticus 25 reads, And the Lord spoke to Moses at Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I will give you, then the land shall reap a Sabbath to the Lord. Six years you shall sow your field, and six years you will prune your vineyard and gather its fruit. But in the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land. Saints, so you're getting this. A Sabbath to the Lord. You shall neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard. What grows of its own accord of your harvest you shall not reap. Not gather the grapes of your untendered vine, for it is the year of the rest of the land. And the Sabbath produce of the land shall be food for you, for you and your male and female servants, your hired men, and the stranger who dwells with you. So are you seeing that? The food and livestock was supposed to take care of people your servants and the strangers and all that. So it was given away to them so they could be blessed. For your livestock and the beasts that are in your land and all its produce shall be for food. And you shall, so, so then once again, we're seeing how the tithe here was food and livestock. Now hear what God is saying. He's saying in the seventh year, you're not going to plant anything in the ground. Why? To give the ground a rest. This is going to be very important here. And you shall count seven Sabbaths of years for yourself, seven times seven, which is 49. And the time of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be for you 49 years. Then you shall cease the trumpet of Jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the seventh month. And the day of atonement, you shall make the triumph sound throughout all your land. And you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. And it shall be a jubilee for you, and each of you shall return to his possession, and each of you shall return to his family. The fifteenth year shall be a jubilee to, or fifth, excuse me, fiftieth year shall be a jubilee to you, and it's you shall neither sow nor reap what grows on its own accord, nor, nor gather the grapes of your untendered vine. It is to the jubilee; it shall be holy to you. You shall eat its produce from the field. In this year of jubilee, each of you shall return to his possession. And if you sell anything to your neighbor or buy from your neighbor's hand, you shall not oppress one another. According to the number of years after the jubilee, you shall buy from your neighbor, and according to the number of years of crops, you shall sell to you. According to the multiple of years, you shall increase its price, and according to the fewer number of years, you shall diminish its price, for he sells to you according to the number of years of the crops. Therefore, you shall not oppress one another, but you shall fear your God. For I am the Lord your God. Now I'm going to get into that oppression here, okay? So you shall observe my statute and keep my commandments and perform them, and you shall dwell in the land in safety. Then, when you do all this, then the Lord will yield its fruit, and you shall eat your fill and dwell there in safety. And if you say, what shall we eat in the seventh year? Now, what? now why are they asking you this? What shall we eat in the seventh year? Why? Because, and again, in the seventh year, you're not allowed to plant anything. 
Therefore, since nothing was planted into the ground, you get no harvest that year because nothing was planted. So he, God says, and if you say, what shall we eat in the seventh year since we shall not sow nor gather or produce? Then I will command my blessing on you in the sixth year, God is saying, and it will bring forth produce enough for three years. So God is saying to make up for that seventh year where you didn't plant anything, God is saying, I'm going to give you a triple harvest in the sixth year to cover you for the seventh year that you didn't plant anything. And you shall sow in the eighth year and eat old produce until the ninth year. So in the eighth year, you're basically going to get, you're going to get like a double harvest because you still have the leftover from the triple harvest of the sixth year. And then you're going to get the harvest of the eighth year. So you're going to eat the old and the new all the way to the ninth year until its produce comes in and you shall eat of the old harvest. Okay. So what, it, what is God saying here? Oh my God, there's so much in this. You see what's happening, saints? God is saying in the seventh year, you don't plant anything. Now, why is that important? If you don't plant anything, that also means you have nothing coming in, which means in the seventh year, nobody was tithing because you can't tithe off of something that doesn't exist. Now, why does again, why doesn't it exist? It doesn't exist because you didn't plant anything in the seventh year to give the land a rest. So in the seventh year, Nothing came in, therefore you have nothing to tithe. You, saints, pastors, are you hearing me? In the seventh year, you had nothing to tithe because nothing came in because you gave the land a rest. Now, pastors, if you're listening to me right now and you're teaching tithing and you believe in tithing, I, I got two questions for you. Well, first, let me give you a story. Years ago, I heard a pastor there was a lady who came up to him and she said, Pastor, she's like, I want to tithe. I want to do what's right. I want to honor God. But because of my financial situations, I just can't afford it. And the pastor, without blinking an eye, said this, Sis, you can't afford not to tithe. He said, he, she's like, he, he, she was like, Pastor, I want to tithe, but I just can't afford it. And the pastor said, Sis, you can't afford not to. Now, there's a lot of you out there right now that may agree with that. I don't. Number one, the Bible says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And it also says in Romans, there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. The Bible also says that we grow from glory to glory and we grow from faith to faith. So here's my question to that pastor. Pastor, what if that, that sister doesn't have the faith that you have? You now just put, remember when I talked about oppression, you now just put that sister under bondage. She's telling you she cannot afford it, and you say, sis, you can't afford not to. Pastor, what if she can't afford 10%? You're telling her, go ahead and do it anyway, because you can't afford not to. Pastor, what if she doesn't have the faith that you have? You now just put that sister under bondage. You now just put that sister under oppression. Pastor, when you tell people to tithe in your congregation and they financially cannot support it, Pastor, you're, you think you're blessing the people, but you're not. You're not blessing the people because you just put that person under oppression. You just put that person under bondage. And the Bible says, like the song that we sing in church, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Guess what? Tithing under the law is, is a form of works and it's a command that God told the farmers and the herdsmen to tithe to take care of the Levites. To put people financially under that command is bondage and oppression pastor and you're the one who just put them under it where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom pastor when you when you teach people they have to tithe and if they don't have the faith to do it well then sis you know you can't afford not to pastor you didn't bless her you put her under bondage and oppression you did not bless her you put her under a yoke that she did not have to bear because Christ redeemed us from all the curses of the law and this curse and this curse was taken away in Christ and also this command was taken away by Christ. Again, this was food and livestock. This was agricultural. It was just an agricultural blessing. It was never finances. Therefore, it was never a financial blessing. Therefore, you just put her under a yoke of bondage that sister did not have to carry. Pastor, you did not bless her. You oppressed her and put her under bondage. So when you say, and when that lady said, Pastor, you know, I love the tithe, but I can't afford it. And he came back with, sis, you can't afford not to. Pastor, you just put her under bondage, number one. Number two, 
Pastor, I got a question for you. If you're really going to teach tithing, if you really are going to teach this, you have to teach all of it. So I'm asking you, so say if your church has been around for 25 years, that means you should have had at least three cycles of seven years on the seventh year, the 14th year, and the 21st year, three cycles of seven, where you should not have tithed at all. If you're going to teach it, you got to teach all of it. So I'm asking you, pastor, in the seventh year, in the 14th year, in the 21st year, did you command the people not to tithe that whole entire year? Because according to the word of God, you should have. Why? Just like to give the land a rest. How about this, pastor? To give my wallet a rest. How about that? If you're going to teach tithing is finances, which it's not, but if you're going to teach that and you're going to teach tithing is commanded to all believers, which it's not, but if you're going to teach that, Pastor, and if you're going to teach tithing in the 7th, 14th, 21st, 28th, 35, 42, 49 years, and even in the 49th year, the year of Jubilee, did you tell the people not to tithe to give our wallets a rest? No. You should have, according to the Bible. You should have. Now, here's my second question to you, Pastor. You told that lady you can't afford not to as if somehow her faith is weak because she doesn't believe God at that level. Well, I have a question for you, Pastor. Where is your faith at? Because in this text, the Bible says in the sixth year, God gave them a triple harvest to get them through the seventh year. So my question, Pastor, to you is, excuse me, Pastor, can you not afford to obey this command? Do you have enough faith to believe God to give you a triple tithe in the third, in the sixth year to carry you over for the seventh year? Where's your faith at, pastor? You say this lady has to have faith because she can't afford not to. Well, what about you, pastor, having enough faith to believe God for a triple harvest in the sixth year to get you through the seventh year where the people don't have to tithe for that seventh year? Do you believe God for a triple financial blessing in the sixth year? Of course you don't. You want to know why? Because God is not obligated to bless that. Why? Because you'd be changing God's word. Again, when God said, I'll give you a, a triple harvest in the sixth year, he was talking about food and livestock. He wasn't talking about money. So do you have enough faith to believe that? Probably not. And if you do, pastor, is God obligated to bless that? Absolutely not. Because that's not his word anymore. That's your word. God didn't say he'd give you triple harvest financially. He said he'd give you triple harvest in the ground. Okay, so if you if you believe God, and that's why I'm not advocating this, I'm, I'm saying this facetiously to prove my point. Okay, pastor, do you have enough faith for, to believe God for a triple harvest in the sixth year? No. And then even if you do, are you doing it? No. And even if you do, is there a guarantee God's going to bless that? No. Because again, God is obligated to bless your, his word, not our word. God is not obligated to bless the mess that we come up with and the mess that we make up. God is obligated to bless what he says he's going to bless, not bless what we're doing and say, God bless this word. God is not obligated to bless our word. He's obligated to bless his. Which again, that's why I'm not advocating this, but I'm just saying, Pastor, do you have enough faith to believe God for that? Because if you're teaching this, if you're teaching tithing, you've got to teach this in its fullness. Now, why do I say that? Saints, again, I've been saved now for 25 years, and almost every single church I've been a member of teaches tithing. And yet, in all my years of being saved, in that 25 years, I've never heard anybody teach Leviticus 25. Ever. In all my years. I've heard him preach Malachi 3. I've heard him preach Mal uh, Leviticus 27 and 30, uh, you know, honor God with, you know, in, in Proverbs 3, honor God with the first of thy increase and in all of your substance. All And again, I, I said, we, we, we should honor God in our money and finances. Absolutely. But to say that it means everybody has to give 10% to your local church. No, that's a lie. That's just simply not true. And nobody ever preaches Leviticus 25. Why? Because if you preach Leviticus 25, you would see that in the seventh year, you have nothing to tithe because nothing came in because you never plant it and sown anything into the ground that year to give the, to, again, to give the land a rest. Well, pastor, if you preach on Leviticus 25, and I just read it to you, you'll see many verses in Leviticus 25. It says, don't oppress the people. Don't oppress the people. Don't oppress the people. Pastor, if you're not giving people 
the seventh year of non-tithing rest, you're oppressing the people. But in all my year, in all my years of being part of the Word of Faith Prosperity Gospel, none of them preach Leviticus 25. And even the people that I that I, I've listened to that are sound, that aren't prosperity pros gospel preachers, and they're not Word of Faith preachers, and yet they're sound and they still do teach tithing. I still don't hear him preach Leviticus 25. None of them. So this is big. This is one of the main reasons why food and livestock as opposed to money is a big deal. That So when we switch it to money, man, we lose a lot of these nuances. And therefore, we're not getting all this. So pastors, if you're teaching tithing, are you on the, at, at, on the end of every seven year, are you giving people a, a, a tithing rest, if you will? You're supposed to. You're supposed to. And do you believe God for triple harvest in the sixth year? Where's your faith at, pastor? You're supposed to. If not, you're biblically out of order. Why might, well, you're biblically out of order anyway by teaching tithing was money and not food and livestock. But still, if you're going to do it, do you have enough faith to believe the word of God here? These are questions I got to ask you. So again, Leviticus 25, boy, it, it's a big chapter. It's a huge chapter, man, because if you don't get this right, um, it truly messes a lot of people up. And, th and this is what I've seen. A lot of people have used the tithe to put people under oppression and bondage. That was the exact opposite of Leviticus 25. God is like, no, let the people glean and let and anything that grows on its own, give it away to the people. Don't, don't receive any of it. And don't plant anything to give the land a rest. Pastors, can you give my wallet a rest, please? Just saying. If you're going to teach it, you got to teach all of it. So I'm going to leave it there. Next week, or my next chapter, we're going to deal with chapter 9. We're going to deal with a lot of these different tithes. Like I said, tithes is plural. And again, there was, you know, 20%, 23%, 30%. I've seen different figures throughout my years of, you know, studying this. And I've been studying this off and on for about 15 years. So I've seen different tithes. Next week, we're going to talk about strangers to the covenant, you know, how the tithe was used to take care of them. Uh, chapter 10 is, you know, that's Deuteronomy 12. Uh, Deuteronomy 14, a long journey. What happens if you have to come to Jerusalem from like hundreds of miles away and, you know, you can't carry food and livestock. So what do you do then? So how do you tie that from a long journey? And then chapter 11 of my book is Deuteronomy 26, ties to ensure everyone rejoices. So again, and this comes out of Joel Parker's book where he talks about, you know, how those tithes, plural, were used to take care of people. So this is a really good book, Tithing in Age of Grace. I'm going to put all these books once again in the description along with my book so you can continue to look at this and it'll be a blessing to you. If this, if this teaching series has blessed you, please let me know in the comments. Also hit like in, in, under the comments. Also hit the red subscribe button uh, to get me into the algorithm. Plus also please feel, sh feel free to share with this with people so you can continue to bless people with you know the word of God. Uh, if you feel free to want to give, please feel free to go under my about section. There's ways to give there as well. Uh, and also please check out my website that's on there as well. So continue to let this, you know, let this message be a blessing to you. Know that Jesus loves you and I do too. And with the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom. Be, be free in Christ and don't go back to the bondage again. Amen. Until next time, God bless.